Hi everybody, welcome back. Thanks for joining me again. In our previous episode, we got the firmware for ESP Home flashed onto our IoT controller, and we got it wired into ESP Home, which is part of Home Assistant. We see it's up here on the screen, it's green, it's connected, and it's sending data. We also went through a few common configuration pain points such as MDNS, which is a broadcast type of traffic that needs to be allowed through if you're traversing different subnets, and DNS name resolution. You're gonna to wanna to enable that. That's gonna weed out a lot of your problems with getting your initial connection into ESP Home. Now we wanna step into a little bit more advanced configuration. Something I really wanna start you out with right off the gate is getting out of the habit of putting any sort of passwords into your firmware. You want those to be broken out and referenced into a secrets file. This is best practice. This keeps those types of more sensitive configuration points out of your firmware and tucked away where they can be secured. Let's take a look at that really quick. It's really simple. Once you get the hang of it, you'll do this for everything. It also makes things much simpler if you decide to change passwords on your Wi-Fi or update the Wi-Fi SSID name, anything like that, rather than having to hit all of your IoT sensors and update that configuration point. You just make that secrets file change and you update the firmware on each of your IoT devices. To start that out, we're gonna to need to get into a terminal session. Now, you should have a terminal button on the left-hand column of your Home Assistant. If you followed along in our Home Assistant configuration video, which I've got a link to right here, you should have this all set up. If you, if you haven't gotten this yet, I recommend you go back and watch that video so that you have some of these baseline configurations in place already. It's gonna make your setup and your interaction with Home Assistant and with ESP Home and your IoT devices in general just so much easier. So go back and watch that if you need to catch up and then come on back. You're gonna to wanna to get into Terminal and we're gonna to go to our configuration folder and the ESP Home folder underneath there and we're gonna to wanna to edit a secrets file. This is not gonna exist, so just edit the file and it'll create it. And in here, we're just gonna insert our key pairs. So the first half will be what we're gonna reference in the file. So we'll just call one Wi-Fi colon, and then the password. You're just gonna reference the key name and then the data payload. So in our case, we're gonna use Wi-Fi and then the password. And then API, same thing. There's an API password in that firmware. We wanna pull that out and put that into our secrets file. So we're gonna do it this way. Save that file and exit out. And now if we go back to ESP Home, we can reference those keys in our firmwares. So back to ESP Home, click edit. And instead of our clear text password here, we're gonna go exclamation mark or bang secret and the reference. We just called it Wi-Fi in the key file, if you recall. And down in our API section, same thing. We wanna reference that API key that I made in the secrets file. So we'll go secret. API, and I'll use the same password for OTA. And now we see the error message in the top row that went away. It does sort of some real-time code validation, which is quite handy, and we can push that up to our device. I'm gonna go ahead and set the failback access point password to use the same one too, because I don't. that was a randomly generated password. I'm never gonna know what that was. So why don't I do the same thing, secret? And so that fallback SSID is if the ESP home device can't connect to any of the Wi-Fi access points that you specify, and you're not doing anything else like telling it to go, go into deep sleep if it can't connect, it's gonna turn itself into an access point so that you can hit this device from, say, a mobile device, tablet, and get into its configuration and take a look at it. That's what that fallback hotspot is for. And now I can hit save and upload. Also, real quick, if you're watching super closely, you probably did notice that I did switch to an ESP8266 from an ESP32. Since my previous video, I reused that ESP32 for something else. So for the purposes of our demonstration, I switched to a different device. Don't worry, I'm not pulling anything over on you. It's all good. So since our original configuration where we had to flash it by USB port because it needed to get online that first time, you can see this time we actually did an OTA flash. That device is not plugged into me. It's just on my Wi-Fi. So we're able to do these updates over the air now, which is really fantastic. We see it uploaded just fine. It gave us some output. We see it's reconnected to the network and that is good. I can close out of this window 
And again, if we look at that configuration file, we see that we now no longer have a clear text password just hanging out in our configuration file here. So that is a much better way to go. The next thing I want to go through is deep sleep mode. And additionally, I want to show you how to wake up a ESP device via MQTT from deep sleep mode. We've talked about this a little bit in the past. One of the challenges is with deep sleep devices is they go to sleep and they wake up for just a second or two to send their sensor data and go back to sleep. So if you're trying to do some firmware updates or any other code modifications, it's gonna be nearly impossible to catch that device during its tiny little wake up period. There's one little trick to that. In ESP Home, you can tell it to listen for a message. So when it wakes up, it's gonna to connect to an MQTT broker. We've got that configuration here. And by the way, all this code sample is on my website. So just take a quick look at that link below. If you're having trouble catching this code in real time, don't worry about it. Just grab that sample right off the website. It's gonna wake up, connect to MQTT. It's gonna check this topic. And if it sees this particular payload, then it's going to prevent from going into deep sleep mode. It's gonna go into just a normal operating cycle. So now you've woken it up and you'll be able to flash your firmware back to it. So that payload that we're sending to it, and we covered this in our MQTT video, you're gonna send it this on payload, it is case sensitive, with a retain flag. So that message is gonna sit there on your broker, and anytime anybody comes on and looks at that topic, they're gonna to see on, okay? That's what we want this device to do. So as soon as we're done flashing our update, we need to make sure and remove that flag before it reboots. So while it's doing its firmware flashing, when it gets to about 80%, I usually go ahead and hit send on the message to clear that retain flag. So if you recall that is dash R dash N, that'll null out that. So when your ESP reboots, comes up, it checks that topic, there's nothing there. It says, okay, cool. I'm gonna go ahead and do my thing and go back to sleep. You'd rinse and repeat if you needed to wake it up to make another modification to your code. Send that on to that topic with the retain flag. That's how this is gonna work. We also have kind of a fallback. I don't usually use this, but I put it in here just as a backup method. You can also force it into sleep mode by specifically sending a on payload, and that will tell it at that moment to enter deep sleep mode. That's kind of a failback in case you forgot to disable that retain flag on reboot, because it only checks it on boot, remember. So once it's booted up and it's idle, it's not gonna check for that flag again until the next time it reboots. But if it's idle, it's not rebooting. So you might have to send that in order to put it to sleep, get it to wake back up, check again. Anyway, that'll help you get out of that loop again. I'm gonna go ahead and upload this. And that'll get our device on our MQTT network. We're gonna cover that in a lot more detail in a future video. I don't wanna run this too long. I think this is a great breaking point. I'd like you to play with some of that MQTT stuff in your free time. I think you'll find some neat tricks. I'd love to hear some of the tricks that you found that maybe I haven't covered. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you're not already, please subscribe, hit that notification bell so you see the next one coming in. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.